Hello, my name is Dr. Yelena Bogdan. I'm an orthopedic trauma surgeon at Jacoby Medical Center in New York City, and today I will be focusing on the fixation portion of the approach to clavicle fractures. Here are my disclosures, none of which are relevant to this talk. Although fixation and reduction cannot always be separated from one another, my goal is to show that if you place the ends of the clavicle in roughly the same neighborhood and hold them there somehow, the clavicle will heal. We will specifically be talking about the mid-shaft clavicle, not proximal or distal clavicle fractures. Before we even get to that, I want to make a point that a person can function even without a clavicle. This is a study of a patient who had a terrible infected non-union that failed multiple treatments, and without seeing her x-ray and just looking at her functional outcome in the photos, it is difficult to imagine that she doesn't have a clavicle at all. This is all the more impressive considering these photos were taken just three weeks after her surgery. So now getting into the ultimate lack of reduction, leaving it alone and just letting the clavicle do what it does naturally. Does it heal? The answer is obviously yes, and it's true most of the time for most clavicles, but not all. How likely is it to heal without any attempt at reduction whatsoever? This meta-analysis, and it's a true meta-analysis of only level 1 data, shows a 14% non-union rate, but conversely it means that 86% go on to heal. So what happens if it doesn't heal? We have some data on clavicle non-unions, but surprisingly my review of the recent literature has not given me a good sense of the true functional outcome if they are left alone for a prolonged period of time, since non-unions are generally operated on before that. So for that, we can go back to some very early literature. In this case series from the 1940s, three out of 17 non-unions were treated non-operatively definitively, and two of them ended up with excellent functional outcome and one with a fair outcome. Here's another study from the 1990s in which there were seven non-unions. Three of them ended up with a rating of good, which meant they were completely pain-free and had completely normal range of motion. The other four were rated as fair, which meant slight or moderate pain and reduction in function. None were rated as poor, as you see in this graph. I find this very interesting since in most, but not all other bones, non-unions are invariably painful. Here's another study, a case report of a patient who had a clavicle non-union and came to be seen one year from injury. He had full range of motion but still had pain. Now normally at most places he would be offered surgery, but in this case he was then treated non-operatively for another six months and ended up asymptomatic. Here's another more recent study. In this one, there was an expectant 15% non-union rate, but now at almost three years, of the nine non-unions, a third were painless, and of the ones that ended up symptomatic and were fixed, about half ended up with scores indicating disability despite surgery, so having surgery didn't solve the issue. Now obviously these are all case series, and there's no, to date that I know of, no randomized trial of operative versus non-operative treatment of non-unions, but they do show an interesting trend that if you wait long enough, as in more than a year, quite a decent portion of them, up to half of these non-unions, become asymptomatic. Certainly something to think about. Moving on to another consequence of no reduction, shortening. Everyone talks about the 2 centimeter cutoff, but does it actually have any clinical meaning? In this 2004 study of 208 patients with almost a decade of follow-up, shortening did not predict outcome in terms of union or anything else except cosmesis. Here's a review of 16 studies, four of which were randomized controlled trials, and specifically when it came to shortening in the non-operative group, 11 out of the 12 studies show no correlation between shortening and functional outcome. Robinson has done a lot of thoughtful work in terms of assessing the actual clinical sequelae of non-operative management, and in this 2017 paper they also found no correlation between shortening and DASH and constant scores, and more importantly no difference in patient satisfaction, even when it reached the cutoff of 2 centimeters of shortening. So now let's say we ignore all that and we choose to treat it operatively. Does reduction or fixation win the day? In other words, which is more important in the operating room? Certainly you could make it perfect. This is one of my cases showing, showing anatomic reduction with lag screws and neutralization plate. This healed fine, but is it necessary? Well, the answer to that is no, and this is an example of bilateral external fixation of the clavicle that healed.
So what if you fix it and then lose your reduction? This is also one of my cases in a smoker, and I'm a big fan of the HSS uh, double mini plate fixation technique, but after this case, I'm a little bit more wary in smokers and choose to use a little bit more stout fixation. Fortunately, despite the plate bending, it did hold long enough to heal, so a loss of reduction doesn't necessarily prevent healing, but there is no data that I could find on that specifically in the literature. Going back to the lack of reduction in the OR and that picture I showed of the external fixator, what if you build a construct that does not rely on perfect reduction? How does it perform in comparison with standard plating? Some examples of this would be external fixation, bridge plating, and intramedullary fixation. External fixation of the clavicle certainly isn't common these days, but it actually does quite well. This study had a 100% healing rate, and the indications were open fractures or even non-unions. This drawing, depicting an axial view, shows the orthogonal pin placement. Here's an intraoperative photo of one of these cases, and look how close the pins are to the fracture site. And even in this construct, healing did take place. This is the bilateral external fixator patient who had initially refused treatment and then developed an open fracture equivalent with C. acne's infection. Again, minimal to no reduction and still a good outcome. How about bridge plating? This review of seven studies showed no difference in functional outcomes or time to union, and minimally invasive approach was slightly favored on the forest plot. What about intramedullary? Similar findings. In this randomized trial of a nail versus a superior plate showed no difference with both groups achieving union in all cases. Another study looked at complications and removal of implants at one year and showed no difference in DASH scores. Here you see the curve flattening out and reaching the same point with time. Here's another larger and more recent randomized trial of 123 patients showing no difference in outcomes at one year regardless of whether the nail was placed via closed versus an open reduction technique. So in summary, reduction is quite secondary to fixation in the operating room when it comes to clavicles and perhaps you don't need to fix it at all. Thank you very much for your attention.